I'm Chris Hardwick. I'm here with Deborah Joy Wine and Seth Gilliam and Juan Javier Cardenas. We're discussing the mid-season finale of season 10 of The Walking Dead. Um, there was a, we had an interesting question um, from Instagram, which is from Little Wind 18. What would season 10 Father Gabriel think of season 5 Father Gabriel? Ooh, Ooh. my. I'm not sure that he would recognize season 5 Father Gabriel. Um, I, I, I think he's, he's come at, at least... The 180 degree difference from from where he was when he started out. I think he's he's far more secure in who he is and what his calling is and what his place and what his role in society and in the communities is. And I think he was kind of a lost man when we first found him. Yeah, uh, Deborah Joy, what was your reaction to Carol and Ezekiel's chat after the funeral? Were you just like Ezekiel? Just tell her. I I wanted him to tell her, but I think he also understands that it would deter her her goals. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as the man, he's like, you know what? No, nah, let me let her do what she's got to do, which I can appreciate, but I, I need somebody to slow her down. Right. Somebody. And if it's not going to be Ezekiel, I think somebody needs to grab a hold of her. Well, they keep, like, they keep having talks. You know, Daryl's like, hey, now, let's just take it down a notch. Okay, I hear you, I hear you. And then she, you know, like, she'll run off into the you woods again. You know what again. she needs? Daryl needs to break her off a piece. That's what, what? he needs. <laughs> and Wait. then she'll call I don't understand. She'll calm down. I'm not she'll, sure. I, she'll yeah. get back to who she needs Wait, to Wait, I don't be. understand. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> what, the, what is the nature of this piece we're breaking off here? Oh, <laughs> no. Are you, are you also a Carol Daryl shipper? Absolutely. Okay. They should have been together. I don't know why she's playing these games. He knows her best. She knows him best. She only listens to Daryl. She only breaks down in front of Daryl. Right. Like, come on. They need to be together. There was a moment as as where I almost kind of thought when they were talking and he, like, wiped a tear off her face, I was like... It's going there. It needs to. Yeah. If it doesn't, <laughs> I'm really going to be angry. <laughs> I've been waiting for 10 seasons. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I feel like Yvette Nicole Brown needs to be here as well Absolutely. to defend this position because she is also... She's been a Daryl Carroll shipper from very, very, very early, or early on. It's just obvious I needed it to happen at the prison. Yep. It didn't. <laughs> I still had hope. And now this is the closest that, like, you see, it's not just a physical thing. They, they need each other. Right. They don't function well without each other. Right. Go on and make it happen. Yeah, they just need to be breaking pieces breaking off. Breaking pieces off. <laughs> and sharing and those everybody's okay. pieces <laughs> together. Share. Share the pieces. Share the pieces. Come this, on. This holiday season. Uh, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about the interrogation scene in the infirmary? Uh, when we sat down to do like a like a little read through of the script, uh, Norman's first comment was like, "I think I should punch him." <laughs> I think we need to punch him. <laughs> then Christian starts chiping in. He's like, "How about I just kick him in the back?" And yeah. I was like, "And I, I would." <laughs> I would like to think that it was all the actors, you know, like really dedicated exuberance to telling the story of the feeling of betrayal and everything, and not just, you know, who's this Yahoo from LA that just killed off one of our beautiful friends, Javi, and right. And uh, but it was it was played uh, phenomenal, and it was it was awesome. It was it was one of the funnest days actually to get to work with uh, so many of the cast members from the show because so much of my work had been compartmentalized with with Avi, which every day was a dream working with him, but it was great. It was great to finally work with Norman and Melissa and Seth and everyone. Also, you should know, we were kind of talking at, at one of the commercial breaks and Juan says, have, have you died in most of the things that... I'm quite good at dying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking about I, if you're if you giving good. Sean Bean a run for his record. I'm his... developing a death reel at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the mail. What's been your lot. favorite, like, just top top three deaths so far? <laughs> by by most <laughs> by most extreme insaneness was probably being uh, uh, exploded on a yacht. Uh, sure. Looking, uh, yeah, looking through some money, some cocaine, and some, uh, you know, microfilm. <laughs> so that was one. I, uh, I, I, I die mostly by head trauma. Okay, mostly. good. Mostly. Uh, three in the back, one in the front. <laughs> uh, it's quite good. I'm putting it on my special skills list, special on my skills. resume. Australian accent, horseback riding, Absolutely. head trauma. Yeah. yeah. I got, it's what I got my degree in. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have been so wonderful. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching Talking Talking Dead. My guests have been Deborah Joy, Seth, and Juan. Good night. Have a wonderful holiday season. We'll see you in February 2020. It's the future, everyone. Daryl E. Dixmas, everybody. Daryl E. Dixmas. Oh.